Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Midnight Strike Through Mormons live stream. I'm your host, Cardinal Ellis, and today I'm joined in the studio by an all star cast. We have got with us Jacob Hansen of Thoughtful Faith mm -hmm. at Thoughtful Saint on YouTube. I'm uh, not YouTube, on Twitter. We also have Brittany the Shadow as well as Cody the Oracle, host of Problem Solving Politics. He's not like our diversity reader today. He's uh, not a member of our faith or of really any of these. Um, controversial conversations that are going on right now so he's going to be like you know our sounding board of reason today we also have <laughs> via the zoom joining us in the chat the subject of today's trial <laughs> um one april de spain who has caused a little bit of a controversy many of you guys may have seen it online she's the one that decided at the uh opening of oh great now i have to look it back up again man so much for being prepared here i am april De Spain, super cool name, by the way. She's the one that decided uh, on, oh, great, now I can't, ah, here it is. Okay, finally. On June 1st, this is when I first met her, she put up a proclamation of the family flag, um, I guess in protest, shall we say, and has been suffering some pretty uh, hardcore backlash. So we're actually just going to see what's going on, talk about it. Um, and everybody's going to have a chance to opine. If any of you guys have any questions for April, make sure you guys send us a super chat and we'll ask her uh, all of these questions. But anyway, April, uh, before I uh, uh, before I waste any more breath, introduce yourself. Tell us what's going on, what's happened, and tell us all about yourself and the modern controversy you are embroiled in. Okay, so my story kind of starts in January 2021 when uh, my child's third grade teacher read a book about transgenderism to his class and um, at that time I began investigating what was going on in the schools regarding just equity topics um, and just came to find out that there were some pretty radical agendas going on in Murray City School District and uh, it was happening nationwide and um, a lot of parents seemed to kind of not want to push back but I I pushed back and I I ended up removing my children from Murray City School District because and now we homeschool because the administration and the teacher essentially lied to me about what was going on and I did not feel that I could trust them with my children anymore but even though I removed my kids I continued fighting this these agendas I ran for school board the next year I lost but in that during that campaign running for school board, I took a lot of bullying for my beliefs. I was very upfront about where I stood on these issues. And obviously these issues are very controversial. So I took a lot of heat for my position on these issues, but I attempted always to just respond respectfully, politely, kind. And it didn't matter how I responded. I, I still continued to get this bullying. So when I lost the election, I was like, I'm done. I am fighting the issues and I'm not, I'm not dealing with politeness. Like I, I, I try to maintain some level of politeness, but if people are going to come and bully me, I'm going to defend myself and hold my ground. And that's kind of where I'm at. And so I've continued exposing the issues in Murray city school district, Utah. And, um, uh, last week I, well, I guess they're probably a couple weeks ago. Now I exposed some pictures in our local junior high of pride flags that were around and the PTA president at the at that school came onto my Facebook page and said, you know, you're a horrible person. You just rip teachers apart. You're you're not a daughter of so God. So an actual and emissary of the state, like an actual elected official, an ambassador of the state did this. Uh, like I've never ran for anything in the PTA, but I, I've heard it is an elected position. So yeah, she's the PTA president at the local school where these pride flags are. And she came on to defend them saying, you know, I've, as a PTA volunteer, I have worked in these schools. I know these teachers, they are good teachers. They are not indoctrinating children and you are wrong. And I told her multiple times that these teachers are public employees paid with public taxes they work in public schools they are educating the children of the public and the public has a right to know what is going on in their classrooms i am not doing anything illegal by disclosing what is going on in these public school classrooms and um but yeah it, she just was very relentless and i 
also am relentlessly going to hold my ground because I am fed up with being bullied for my religious beliefs. I'm done and I'm going to defend myself. Um, and so it, well, let me let me just interrupt you for a second. For anybody that's tuning in right now, I want to make sure that I catch everybody that's just joining us in the live stream up in the controversy. This uh, this is what happened um, on uh, June 1st. All right. What's interesting is here in Los Angeles, I feel like the fever has broken. Uh, it seems like um, the uh, we've come full circle. The, 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 the coolness of pride being a new thing like it was in the 90s and early 2000s. It's kind of a little bit passe. A lot of people have gotten tired of what they see as the reverse discrimination and the bullying that's happened at right. hand of it. Um, whereas I see in Utah, it looks like it's still uh, alive and well. I, I saw this picture and I thought, whoa, this girl has guts. So this is April Wilde Spain. The very first thing I ever saw of you was simply a picture of this lovely uh, strawberry blonde woman standing with her <laughs> um, like dad of dad in cargo shorts. He literally looks like he's got black New Balance <laughs> sneakers on and just got done mowing the lawn. All right. Um, with, he probably did. Yeah, with a flag in the front of your house that simply says the proclamation of the family. And it said, we heard June was the month to hang up flags celebrating our personal beliefs about gender, sexuality, and identity. So we hung ours. High five. Now, <laughs> I, I will push back a little bit. I mean, you were, th that's, that's a pretty combative move. Now, at the same token, there is no rhetorical difference. And, and I bring this up to my audience. There really is no rhetorical difference between what you are doing in a predominantly pride-filled neighborhood than what pride people would be doing if putting up a pride flag in, I don't know, a predominantly Catholic neighborhood or something, all right? Like, we're all around our little... This is, to me, this is a zinger, okay? You basically, uh, you basically were enge engaged in a protest zinger, right? But, man, I feel like this punishment did not quite fit the crime, okay? And uh, <laughs> all you ended up getting afterwards was just some crazy stuff I couldn't believe about it. The next tweet I saw, I see up here, there's little volunteers that the PTA sent out to post pride flags on your lawn, your private property. I mean, isn't this trespassing? Isn't there like laws against this? I could never imagine as uh, a member of a faith group or as, like I couldn't imagine putting a Trump MAGA flag on, I don't know, Jesse Smollett's lawn and not being, you know, arrested for trespassing or something. Yet here you are having these people coming on your property doing what they did. Tell us tell us what the the pushback has been and what it is. So actually that timeline is a little off. Um the PTA president sent the pride flags on Sunday, May 28th. So I had not yet post uh put my family proclamation flag. In fact, we hadn't even received it yet. It was um, Oh, okay. We 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 received it on June 1st. So they came after but, So they came after you first with right, the flags. Yeah. Uh-huh. Really? So yeah, it's kind of um ironic, I guess, because I had already intended to hang up a family proclamation for the month of June and she sent these pride flags to us, seven pride flags um, on May 28th, and Jennifer. she intended them to Who be on that? our lawn for Jennifer. the month of June. So. Oops, sorry, I actually sorry. pressed play. Keep going. I finished what you were saying? Uh, she donated them to our yard for the month of June. That was what the the uh, volunteers had told us. That yeah, She donated them for the for pride month, you know, and we... <laughs> I have a question. So, yeah, that... Okay. And did she donate the flags just for your house or for other houses in the school district as well? Like, did she single you out with these flags? Right. Yeah, she singled us out because of the interactions on Facebook. She Dude. had. Uh, wow. So this she, was before you put up your family proclamation flag. So basically, the pride bullies decided that they wanted to kind of intimidate you a little bit and decided right. to kind of use a fun. Now, by the way, I will say this. So far, everything I've seen is just zingers that are a little bit humorous, okay? Like, I think it's kind of funny when, like, when the gay pride people wanted to light up the Y that one night and they made the Y kind of rainbow colored. Like, I look at that and some people got really pissed. Some people clutched their pearls, but I thought, okay, that's kind of funny, you know? Do it for a week, then it gets old. Do it for a month, it's over. But, like, once, okay, that's kind of funny. You throwing up the pride flag, I mean, sorry, the family proclamation flag, 
in Pride Month. I look at that and I'm like, okay, it, it's kind of funny. You know, all of this to me is just the good tension that exists and it's the sound of freedom in a society that allows for the, 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 free, the, the exercise of free speech. Where I started having problems, okay, I'm going to pull this up right here so that our, our uh, viewers can see it. Where I started having problems, I thought like, whoa, okay, this is kind of going a little bit too far. And it started getting a little bit crazy, okay, was when I just started seeing, um, I mean, I don't mind when people have Brigham Young with guns in their hands. But if you're going to say that having a gun in your hand and a meme is an initiation of violence. I need the woke scolds that said the Brigham Young meme is, meme is bad coming out and condemning it as well. And then you got legit death threats. I'm going to have to look for a second mm -hmm. and pull up the death threat that you posted. But there was somebody that literally just said, like, I'm going to murder you on the same lawn that you posted these uh, proclamations of the family flags. What? Like, oh, it was crazy. I'll, I'll pull it up. Tell us how it went, April. Uh, they said they would murder me and my family. I, I don't remember all the exact wording, but yeah, that was what they said. And yeah, we've been doxxed. Um, they, they, uh, we saw posts with our address and our phone number and, um, they texted us and called us and yeah, we had death threats and, um, told we should kill ourselves. Um, yeah. Okay. All that kind sorry of stuff. to interrupt again. Um, I don't know Utah layout at, at all. Where is, like, what major city are you next to? Are you We're a suburb of Salt Lake City. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So, um, Cody, really fast, before we go, you're our diversity reader here. All right? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, we're going to throw to you, and we're, gonna, um, we're going to uh, just have you analyze, you know, wh what do you think about this whole thing? Like, what's, what's, uh, wh what do you think so far is... Is this a big fat nothing burger? Is poor April getting mistreated? You know what I'm saying? What is the proclamation of the family? Tell us what's going on. What do you think's going on? Uh, what I think's going on? Honestly, I have like, kind of in a lot of the things where these things happen, and like the general kind of like the the uh, the amount of interest in the kind of private thoughts of random strangers that happen to live in your same neighborhoods and communities. I think it's it is a little weird, you know. Like I think we were talking earlier, it's kind of bizarre the notion that like. You used to insist somebody flew your flag if you like conquered their country. Like we used to have like flags for like <laughs> like board and, like nations and like. You know I mean, it's like weird to have like a flag that just represents kind of like a group of people, sort of right. It's always expanding. I know that there's the there's the regular pride flag. Mm -hmm. There's the racial pride flag. Like the trans pride flag is the one that has like all of them combined. Like it's just this like weird over expanding just kind of like loosely defined idea right and it's a weird thing like there's a flag for like the state of california for example it's got the bear on it that's that that's a very it's california it's a state it's a thing right it is really weird the insistence to like fly a flag that one always changing and two it's not like there, there is no there's no president of the lgbt you know what i mean like it's just a, yeah. it's just <laughs> people just decided this is the image and it's so, so bizarre to see like uh, just like the I guess the point I'm trying to make is that it really does kind of it really is distressing. But like again, like the insistence that you fly a flag, it doesn't really. It feels really like intrusive. a religion. Would you say it feels like <laughs> it feels like just like as far as society stuff goes, like a big line crosser. You know what I mean? So okay, Cody, I, here's what I think Cody might be missing. Is oh, of course he is, because we got the great <laughs> Jacob, the philosopher, in the room. You know what I'm saying? Okay, keep going. Here, here's what Cody's missing though: is how hateful the stuff that she put up in her yard is like she put up the family proclamation and if you were aware of what that document says yeah, you would, do, you let's know read it, it do you know you what would, it is Cody? you would understand why they're making death threats yeah, well i'm but here's the thing like just to, get, but to get to like the like it honestly like it should be able to say whatever you want you know what i mean like it's very bizarre this idea that it's like because again it's like it's kind of like these like proxy fights people pick over like here's the thing right those people that are like super down with the pride and like literally delivering flags to someone's house, like they're not going to change their mind, yeah. and like you're not going to like give up your faith, right? But so it's like, you do, like, but you do yeah. have to understand. You could see someone maybe being a little bit outraged if someone's flying a Nazi flag in their front yard, like in the United States. People might be upset about that. Sure, they have the right to do it, but we might be opposed to that. Now the question though is, is what like anyone? I think someone's looking at this. You go, what did? April put in her yard that caused such a controversy. Let's read it. Okay, well, Let's also, read it. Okay. going off that, you have the right to be upset. You do not have the right to come onto my property. 
That's where right? I would get. That, 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 that's, that's, that's what's really crazy and bizarre about this to me, right? It's like it's one thing if you know people like neighbors, you know, like yeah, you're not gonna always agree with your neighbor's lawn decorations or whatever. But it's it's <laughs> the, it's the it's the kind of like the weird like line pushing of like showing up to someone's house with. And again, it's like like really like like it's like battling over symbolism, and I don't know. It's very it's very weird, very bizarre, and it's very again. It feels like just like on like a kind of like just living together in society thing. Do you know what it reminds it'd me? It'd be of? one thing if she went over to someone's house and put the Mormon flag in their front yard. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that'd be that would be a little bit crossing the line, right? It's like, whoa, I don't believe this. I am in favor of making this our official flag. By the way. Oh, you're in favor of? Well, here, Cody, let's catch you up culturally so you understand the full breadth and the context of everything here. All right. But um, before we go, I will actually show social proof uh, that I promised before of what is happening to uh, poor April here. I found the tweet that she had retweeted, but it says, um, as you can read right here, um, actually, I didn't frame that very well. So I'm going to take this back down and put it here uh, on the screen in front of you for everybody that's just tuning in. Um, this is something she retweeted as well. It says, uh, this is her profile. It says, April Wilde to Spain, homeschool mom. And man, that is such a typical thing for a homeschool mom to do. Put that as the very, very first thing in her bio. <laughs> homeschool moms, I'm going to call you all out right now only because uh, we homeschooled for two years. And I got to learn a lot of your tribe. And I lived amongst you for two years. Um, they're kind of like vegans. Like, you know, vegans, no, like, not. how do you know I'm not somebody? I'm a typical homeschool mom. <laughs> okay, cool. That, well, just, just the tribe in general. You know, how do you know somebody's a vegan? Don't worry, they'll let you know. Like, you know, homeschool moms, <laughs> they, they will let you know. Okay, but I like that. I like that. If, if you're going to be proud about something, you might as well be loud and proud, right? So anyway, um, the irony of saying that during Pride Month is not lost to me either. That's very funny. <laughs> so anyway, um, here's your profile. It says, homeschool mom, extremely smart and amazing, which you are. Enjoys causing unnecessary yeah. drama. Okay. I wouldn't call this unnecessary, but I would definitely say um, the average bear would not seek it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then not a member or believer in the LGBTQ religion. Bite me, I bite back. Now, I like that. I like that. But I don't mm -hmm. like what the person said. The person responded to you saying, bite me, I bite back. Okay, Karen, I will effing murder you and uh, your, your progeny. I guess I don't want to say these things on camera you know what i'm saying also being gay is not a religion you hag oh so you've been um by the love and tolerance people you have been both tolerated and loved uh before we go any further jonah barnes gives super chat says go fund me to make the official lds flag title of liberty mm -hmm. april is based and awesome so that's the Thanks. new ba Instead of bad A, you're based and awesome. We just did that here <laughs> live with April to Spain. Okay. So anyway, you're getting all these kind of crazy superfluous death, threat, death, thre death threats over posting what is, I hate to say it, but kind of like a little bit of a nothing burger, basically a flag <laughs> of your basic Christian beliefs in the family. And in order to keep Cody, the oracle, who's our... Uh, half Catholic, half Jewish, generally completely agnostic, non-religious person, <laughs> our, uh, our, our diversity reader. We're going to read the proclamation of the family and catch Cody up as to what all the whole hullabaloo is about. So, uh, Brittany, can you read that or is it too small on your screen? Um, it's too small and I have bad eyesight. Oh, it's too small and you have bad <laughs> eyesight. Okay. I was going to make it bigger, but here, I'll just read it for all of us. Okay. It says, Cody, this is, this is the cray-cray that's causing all the stir. We, the First Presidency of the Council of Twelve, remember this happened in the mid-90s, okay? We, the First Presidency and the Council of Twelve Apostles, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a.k.a. the leadership, solemnly proclaim that marriage between a man and a woman is ordained of God and the family is central to the Creator, a.k.a. God, the Creator's plan for the eternal destiny of His children. All human beings, male and female, are created in the image of God. Each is a beloved spirit, son or daughter of heavenly parents. And as such, each has a divine nature and destiny. Gender is an essential characteristic of individual, premortal, mortal, and eternity, identity, and purpose. This is long before any of the gender arguments existed, by the way. Um, in the premortal realm, spirit, sons, and daughters knew and worshiped God as the eternal father and accepted his plan by which his children could obtain a physical body and gain earthly experience to progress towards perfection and ultimately realize the divine destiny as heirs in eternal life. Kind of basic, you know... Uh, there's heaven waiting for the good people, you know? And this divine plan of happiness enables family relationships to be perpetuated beyond the grave. Sacred ordinances, covenants available in holy temples make it possible for individuals to return to the presence of God, for families to be united eternally. 
The first commandment that God gave Adam and Eve pertained to their potential for parenthood, and we declare God's commandment for his children to multiply and replenish the earth remains in fourth. So, you know, go out, be parents, have kids, love each other. You know, we declare by me means which mortal life is created to be divinely appointed. So, you know, don't engage in casual sex, as Epictetus said. And we affirm the sanctity of life and its importance in God's eternal plan. Husband and wife have solemn responsibilities. I'll go to the last page or the last uh, paragraph, which is really the only kind of semi salacious <laughs> one that says we warn that individuals who violate covenants of chastity, who abuse spouse or offspring or who fail to fulfill family responsibilities will one day stand accountable before God. Further, we warn that the disintegration of the family will bring upon individuals, communities, and nations the calamities foretold by ancient and modern prophets. Mm -hmm. And they call upon responsible citizens and officers of government everywhere to promote those measures designed to maintain and strengthen the family as the fundamental unit of society. So, so what did you think of the point blank? What did you think of the proclamation of the family, Cody? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess like kind of like my, my original point was it seems like, and again, like these conflicts are kind of pulling, like kind of appearing all over the country and it's kind of bizarre. I, I, I mean, like, yeah, this is pretty benign, right? But honestly, I feel like a lot of the people that are upset, if you wrote all of this and then you just put trans rights on the bottom with like a pride flag, they'd be okay with it. They'd be cool. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, it's like. It's like it's the kind of thing where it's like, yeah, I don't think anything in here was like so offensive. It was like it was just the defiance of the other movement. That was the that was the sin. Right. You know, you bring up a really good point. How much of this do you feel, April, is tribalism because you dare go against the grain, as George Orwell said during, you know, uh, uh, times of terrible tyranny, uh, speaking uh, simple truths is, an, is a revolutionary act. How much of this do you feel is actual just tribalism? How much of this do you feel is kind of philosophical and we're having a good argument here? You mean in the responses to me? To you, yes. It's, to me, it's mostly tribalism. Um, the majority of responses are just extremely angry and hateful and which is fine. You know, I'm like, say whatever you want. I'm not backing down, but uh, all beliefs deserve to be respected. We live in a free country. June is the month where our belief, their beliefs on sexuality and identity and gender and love are celebrated and promoted. I mean, year round it's celebrated and promoted, but I'm, I'm making a statement to me. It's not a, it's not a joke. It's serious. Um, I am sick and tired of my kids' schools being a place where they have to set aside their beliefs and be told that in order for the schools to be safe and for cer certain students to feel safe, other students need to set aside their beliefs. That's not freedom anymore when we start doing that. That's a state-sponsored religion, and it, it needs to stop, and that's my purpose. I'm not, I'm not trying to mock i'm not trying to hurt anyone i am taking a stand for freedom for truth for what i believe is true um and for my freedom to have my own beliefs and to not be told that they need to be set aside and for my children too well so, I, I think that's a wholly noble goal and uh it, sometimes freedom is an, a messy endeavor so obviously there is going to be pushback. Uh, you've gotten some pretty insane pushback here I see on your profile. We're going to address some super chats and then you're going to talk about, looks like you had to lawyer up because you're getting some beyond hate mail. You're getting like people trying to actually legally indict you and intimidate you and things like that. Uh, before we go any farther, <laughs> SSTJ Laurent says, grateful for Jacob and his content that helps me explain my epistemology to those I work with. I am grateful also for the Midnight Saints. You mean Midnight? Oh, I see what he did here. See, we're no longer <laughs> Midnight Mormons. He's calling us Midnight Saints. Bless his soul. How did he know the rebranding? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, you guessed it. All, you know, so anyway, um, for Midnight Mormons giving me entertaining content, can't wait for the sub service. Okay, awesome. We also got another super chat from Rex. Good. What's up, Rex? Uh, I found out in another chat recently, uh, for those of you that haven't watched our video with the numerology of Jesus with Prince Meth Mensa, a recent convert from Ghana, he went over the numerology of the New Testament in Jesus this morning. It was really fun. And in the chat of those premieres, if you haven't seen any of our premiere content, when we premiere uh, videos, I hang out in the chat usually for the first uh, 30 minutes to an hour answering all kinds of questions. And Rex Good mentioned that his name means, what was it again, Rex? It means like godly king or something. And once in a grocery store, somebody recognized that his name actually meant that. And they <laughs> bowed to him. 
in the cereal aisle Whoa. of Smith's. So that was pretty cool. Anyway, Rex Good <laughs> says, nothing they are doing in school these days would have helped me have the full and happy life I now enjoy. Rex is a, a gay member of the church who's happily married to a wife and has lots of lovely children and from what I understand, sings beautifully. And Jeez. if he's saying everything they're pushing now would keep me from happiness, I think that's a pretty supreme indictment. Um, we've got another super chat here. Thank you very much. Reddy Fox says, I'm an April stan. Oh, do you know what a stan is, April? No. Oh, a stan. Actually, Cody, you have to explain this. It comes from the Eminem song. Hello, Stan. Right. Isn't yeah, it? I'm, I'm not like a scholar on it, but yeah, it's like a uh, it's it's a song about an overly of the top obsessive fan. So like people that are like oh. big time over <laughs> top obsessive fans would be referred to as. So, so it's a compliment. If somebody says I'm a stan, it means like I'm a super fan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, yeah, you, you just got younger millennial Gen Z uh, slanged. So you should be very, oh. very proud. Uh, says, I'm an April stan, <laughs> but why did you have to stoop to the same low as Jennifer, i.e. witch? Oh, I think they're making a joke. Wicked Witch of the West. I think it would it could have been done differently. Love that flag, though. Oh, oh you know, there there is questions no. Of, of. No, I don't think they're making a joke. Oh, you I don't think so? I did call her a witch. Oh, snap. Oh, so. <laughs> and, and, well, you did have somebody uh, death threat you. So if you became a little bit indignant, I kind of understand. Oh, no. They're talking about the PTA president. Um, so she came onto my Facebook page and she was bullying my family. She brought up a personal situation. We have a brother-in-law and sister-in-law who are going through a divorce and there's allegations of abuse and it's caused some. Oh, of course there is. That's the way it always goes. Right. And it's, uh, caused some serious friction in our family. And, um, so when this PTA president, Jenna Werda came onto our, uh, Facebook page, she was like brought up that issue which is a private issue i've never posted i've never shared about it and she was like you're you know just basically said you're a horrible daughter of god because you don't talk to your mother-in-law right now and then she said to my husband how does it feel not to have a relationship with your mother and at that point i said wow you you have a serious problem that you're spending this much time gossiping about us and about something you know nothing about and i I think I said, you nasty witch. I said, I called her a nasty witch. All said, because of a flag. All because of a flag. And the oh, irony. No, 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 no. This was before. This was because I have been oh, exposing okay. the issues in public schools. So, yeah. Okay. And, well, either way. I was mad. So, the, uh, and people can judge me. They can say I went, I went low and I shouldn't have done that. Well, so be it. I don't, I'm done. I'm sick of being bullied. And to those people who are saying you shouldn't have called her a nasty witch. Those are generally the same people who also won't take a stand for anything yeah it is. you know i've it, had i, I just was going to say i i see this all the time and i think you're exactly right that it's really ironic when the people will get mad at you for calling right. someone a witch get, being angry okay a little bit but not stand up to the fact that you have pornographic material in in children's books and schools exactly and and and, and this incredibly dangerous ideological takeover it's like really really that's the big issue we have this weird culture that exists exactly. especially amongst latter-day saints where we're so obsessed with being nice mm -hmm. and niceness is like the ultimate virtue that to violate the standards of niceness is the greatest sin you could possibly have all of these other things which is really just suburban decorum like it's not even niceness it's suburban decorum right. is the new false idol because suburban decorum is not christ-like and don't and don't get me wrong like there is a there is civility is a, is an important thing like i i agree with all of that but i'm sorry when you're in an ideological battlefield and someone gets a little heated and calls someone a witch really that's the thing at the top of your list of like oh. while there's death threats yeah. Like literal death threats. You don't have an issue with that. Well, so here's a thing. I wrote a little, I'm a, I'm a writer at heart. I wrote a little um, essay, I guess you would call it, about these things. And I talked about the um, stripling lawyers. There's a scripture, and now I can't remember exactly where it is, but they said it was, I think it was Helaman, and he's saying like, what say ye, my sons, will you go against them? And they, the, the stripling lawyers say, yes we will go against them we would if they would let us alone we wouldn't go against them but because they won't let us alone we will 
And that's where I'm at. I'm like, you guys won't stop. You will not leave my children alone. You will not respect my religious freedom. You won't respect my freedom of speech. And so I'm going to hold my ground and stand up. It's not something where I'm like, ooh, what a nasty witch. I want to go after her. I didn't go on her Facebook page. I didn't come to her yard. I didn't, I wouldn't have gone after her if she left me alone. But these bullies are relentless. They won't stop. And so if they will not let me alone, I will hold my ground. And if that includes calling someone a nasty witch, so be it. And you can all look down your noses and judge me, but I'm taking a stand for what I know is true. And I'm taking a stand for my family. And in the end, I will stand before God and be judged for what I've done and what I said. And I am okay with that. But I'm sick and tired of being judged and looked down noses by members in my own church who do nothing to stand up for truth. I'm tired of that. And I go to church and they do it to me. They look down their noses. They preach their little Sunday school lessons. And I'm just like, so be it. We'll all stand before God and you will too. And you've seen the bullying I've taken. You didn't stand up for me. You didn't stand up for what you claim to believe as truth. And you'll stand before God too. Well, so each of us will be judged. Well, let, let Brittany jump in here. Yeah, then we'll yeah, go, go back to you. Uh, Jake, okay. what'd you have to say, Brittany? I was going to say, I have a lot of comments and I'm trying to get a word in and yeah. now I got to remember all the comments I was trying to say, but, um, April, I'm with you. She's a witch. Okay. Let's just call a spade a spade. She's a witch. Yeah. Also, is she a member? No, she's not. Okay. Well, it's not always the, one day it's always the anti-Mormons that are so concerned about telling Mormons to be Christ-like. They spend all of their time talking about how God doesn't exist and there is no Christ. And the second you give them a minor amount of pushback, pushback and simply say, like, I disagree or I protest. That's not Christ-like! Okay, you know? stop. I also yeah. had another comment. Okay, <laughs> keep going, uh, babe. Keep going. I have, like, sweaty hands because I'm, like, trying to interject. Well, good okay. thing you're hot. You get a word in. <laughs> okay also i was gonna say i think a lot of times people forget that jesus literally turned over tables i think you they forget that he cursed a fig tree i think we forget that we were or nephi was told to cut off laban's head like there are times when you have to stand up and if someone's attacking you if someone's giving you death threats if someone's coming on your front lawn i was gonna say a curse word but yeah, yeah, like we're gonna we're gonna go and like, Time dude, I'm back. just like, I get in verbal fights at my son's soccer games. So like, I can't even imagine the abuse <laughs> you've gone through. Like, yeah. So yeah, yeah, let's I'm go over you. that. Though. Can I can I say another yes. thing? Um, yeah. One of the things that was said in our Sunday school lesson this past week was how, you know, if we'd all just be more loving, the world would be a better place. And of course, that's true. I agree. But what does it mean to love? And the, it was brought up that when Christ was dying on the cross, he said, for, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He still loved even the people who crucified him. That's true. But let's also point out the fact that the people he loved were the ones who crucified him because they were so angry about the truth he spoke to them. Yeah. So when we speak truth, that is love, and it offends. It makes people angry. So be it. So that's what Christ did. So it's interesting because I had someone once point something out that really kind of blew my mind when they said that. Yeah, she's speaking your language, <laughs> dude. She's speaking your language. That the opposite of love is not hatred. That was me. The opposite of love is not hate. It's apathy. Okay, then it m must yeah. have been you, Card. You get all oh, the credit yeah. on that. It's the apathy. best things I you agree. ever say are from me. I know. And, no, okay. <laughs> and but but this is the thing it goes back to what you're saying about these people that don't do anything that don't ever stand up when it actually is tough because they're apathetic that that's what it's a manifestation of cowardice it's a manifestation of oh no you're going to rock the boat and for them it's about i don't want to cause any controversy but if you love something if you love someone you're willing to stand up and fight for it and frankly if you're not if you don't love and aren't willing to stand up for the family proclamation as a Latter-day Saint, that's just like, like this is at the core of our theology as Latter-day Saints. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what we believe is at the heart of the plan of salvation. And so the fact that you're being chastised by people for saying that someone's a witch in when other people are out there crapping all over the family proclamation, it's like, I, I it's like, 
we as saints are so many members of the church. I'm not going to say everyone, obviously, but so many are just so clueless as to the nature of what we have as Latter-day Saints and the centrality of that document in the unique aspects of Restoration Theology. Now, I promised April that we'd only go for 60 minutes, and I'm going to be good to that promise. So we only really have about 15, 11 to 15 minutes left here. If any of you guys have any Super Chats, any questions for April, then just make sure you send them our way. We'll re- we will read them live on air. For any of you guys that are just tuning in, Here's a really quick uh, little summary again of what's going on. We are talking right now with April Despain. You can check out her uh, Twitter profile here. She is a homeschool mom. She's extremely smart and amazing as self-declared via Twitter. (laughs) Also enjoys causing unnecessary (laughs) drama. One of those dramas is that she's not a member or believer in the LGBTQ religion. She says, bite me and I bite back. And how did she bite? Well, on April 1st, she posted a photo of her and her husband. June 1st. Uh, June 1st. Sorry, I apologize. Uh, She posted a picture of her and her husband uh, on their front lawn. And instead of having a pride flag, she had a a flag of the proclamation of the family, which is, you know, I I get it. It's kind of a little bit in Internet culture become the uh, the banner of the church, for lack of a better term. So. Uh, during Pride Month, she posts a banner of her Christian beliefs, for lack of a better term. And it really, really angered what she calls the LGBTQ religion. And it's resulted in all kinds of crazy death threats. She's had all kinds of people um, saying they're going to come over and M-word, eliminate the uh, her and her entire family on her front lawn. She's gotten all kinds of crazy cease and desist letters. Like, it's stuff that I, I can't imagine the level of stress that you are going through right now, April. So um, here's a couple of questions uh, from our audience. Jonah Barnes says, April, how can we saints in the diaspora? OK, he means uh, the 12 tri- the 11 tribes of Israel that are still lost in Atlantis and hollow earth. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, April, how can we saints in the diaspora uh, push back against the woke onslaught? It's getting cray cray out there. Crickets from SLC, and I do believe he means crickets from the uh, middle management of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So, um, yeah, how, how do you think saints in the diaspora can push back against the woke onslaught? What's diaspora? What? It's the area outside <laughs> of Israel. So it's the Jews that were outside of the land of uh, Israel. They were known as the Jews in the diaspora. Whenever uh, I say that we are diasporic Mormons, that's what I'm talking about. I've never heard that. Sometimes we're not in the Holy Land. <laughs> yes, yeah, sometimes. Well, I, 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 ooh, I hate it when Utahns think that the whole the Zion is Utah. Oh, that's okay. Just well, I was gonna me. ask: Is this like okay. a crazy thing happening over Utah? Is this just like a one-off incident because you're near Salt Lake? Like, I live in LA County, and I've never heard anything this crazy. I, uh, I don't think it. I don't think it's a one-off thing. You know, I, I don't know if you guys have heard of Nicole Solosh, but she's in Rhode Island, and she's been fighting these issues in the schools. She's not a member of the of our church, but she's a, uh, she's Christian, and uh, she's fighting as hard as I am. You know, she's been sued by the NEA, and she, she we have a lot of people like that going through crazy things just because they want to. Um, believe as they believe that gender is binary that gender is actually biological and that man and woman are or you know marriage between a man and a woman is what god wants those kind of things i don't think it's a one-off for me so okay um so he he asked what what can we do so i think you know order (laughs) i i i'm not obviously i'm not going to speak for the church leadership but we need to start fighting for our our religious freedom and we need to stop being afraid of uh if it causes people to be upset like so many people are like you're causing contention no i'm just speaking truth i am standing for truth if other people get upset that's their problem i'm not trying to fight i hold my ground if people fight with me but my purpose is not to be contentious my purpose is to stand for truth we need to stop being afraid we need to speak up we need to do whatever you need to do to stand for truth but like i wrote a post today and i'm like ask your school administrators to hang up a family proclamation or to hang up something that represents your personal belief system about gender sexuality identity and love and when they say no file a lawsuit for religious discrimination because 
this whole thing with the LGBTQ ideology, their identity and sexuality and whatever, it's not based on measurable scientific evidence. It's not based on fact. It's not something that can be proven any more than my identity as a daughter of God can be proven. It's something I, my identity as a daughter of God is something I feel on the inside. It's my faith. And that's what exactly what they say in these books. My, the book that was read to my son's class about transgenderism, it was about a girl who decided she was a boy. And she said, I know I'm a boy because I feel like one on the inside. Repeatedly, repeatedly, it said that. And I'm like, that's a religion. She feels it on the inside. So she she reorganizes her life to follow that that feeling, that belief, that faith. It is a belief system and we need to start pushing back in terms of what's a religion, what's a belief system. If you're going to promote one belief system, then you need to promote all belief systems because the first amendment of the US constitution states that there shall be no state sponsored religion. So if public schools, state facilities are promoting these belief systems as truth over all other belief systems, that's a state sponsored religion. That is contrary to the US constitution. It needs to stop, and the way it's going to stop is we stand up and we file lawsuits. We push back. So that's my advice, and that's what, I, that's what I'm doing. I'm all for it. I support it. <laughs> Great idea. Okay, Basically, so yeah. I'm actually going to uh, put up a couple more of the, um, the clips here because, I mean, you, you are prolific on Twitter when it comes to when something happens. You uh, just document it and put it out there. I mean, I am looking at this right now. You had the cops were sent to your house. Yeah. I, I mean, this is yeah. absolutely absurd. For what? Look, it's right here. We're, we're going to play. Well, did Let's you see, see what she posted in her yard? I did mean, you read what that document said? I think it would have been more I mean, this hateful is insane, you guys. if you would have put, like, live, laugh, love at the end, because I can't stand that. <laughs> then I might have, like, <laughs> sent cops yeah. to your door, but, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. that's funny. All those drinks about, like, you know... Uh, 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 friends welcome relatives by appointment that would have that that cheesy one would have guy talked. okay well so we're gonna look at this i mean this is absolutely crazy april i can't believe this happened to you we're gonna play this and see what they say oh it's thinking the the computer is thinking and it doesn't want to play come on you so can let me give it. some background while you're waiting the, okay cool the pta president had sent the pride flags at that point, we filed a, a, a complaint with the police for harassment. Apparently, she also filed a complaint. I don't know what she based hers on. She, well, she said it was cyberbullying, but I'm like, you came on my page. I just defended myself. But anyway, so interestingly enough, the police um, talked to her first, and then they showed up at our house unannounced and just said, yeah, you're equally at fault. For harassment if you talk to her again you're going to be charged with um criminal cyber harassing or something like that and i was just like yeah we'll see, we'll you see know, about that. I, I can't tell you how many times i've heard this in uh the trainings that you have for arms tra training or if you're going to have your ccw and things like that the number one thing they tell you is if you ever get involved in an incident there's tons of times where somebody has a, a, a legal right to carry or a concealed uh, carry license and somebody comes up to uh, inflict grievous bodily harm or to steal property from them or threatens their life and then you know they brandish their weapon and say get get, get out of here get away they successfully and legally defend themselves but as soon as they put back their their arm in their pocket and they continue on their merry day they commit one huge grievous error and that's not immediately calling the cops and being the first one to complain because mm -hmm. if the other person does it and says, he did this to me, unprovoked, he pulled that out on me. You know what I'm saying? Then all of a sudden you are on defense and you never win. So I think what you say is, I mean, it's true. If you think it's time to fight back legally within the bounds that our, our constitution has set forth, within the bounds that our municipalities and the rule of law dictates, then yeah. But just make sure, though, that yeah, you, you're very well documented, that you, you, you do right. complain of abuse and things like that. Because she can send pride flags to your house which rhetorically is no different than a gay person protesting, I don't know, Father's Day or a divorcee that hates her husband on International Man Day or something, putting a flag up there that just says men suck. You know what I'm saying? Like, like rhetorically, what you did is really no different than uh, a, com a combative uh, gay rights individual putting a big, giant, loud and proud gay pride flag up in a Catholic neighborhood or well, I, I would 
I would push back and disagree a little bit with you there, Cardin. Cause well, you know the best part about you disagreeing with me? What's that? I control your microphone. So no, I just, yeah, I just totally <laughs> That's keep going. Okay. Can win in that <laughs> I know, how <laughs> savage, dude. So okay, keep going. So I, I was just gonna say though, I think that April makes a great point. If people are going to go out and put up symbols of their beliefs about identity, gender, sexuality, etc., then why can't we all put up symbols of our beliefs about that subject? It it it's only fair and equal that everyone be able to do that, right. and that we all equally you know, respect and validate all points of view. But apparently here, some points of view are allowed and supposed to be celebrated while others are bad. Also, and if you're going to like, like we got to figure out what's okay to mean. Like if this is okay to do to April, cause you disagree with April, then it's gotta be okay to do to Jim Bennett. If you disagree with Jim Bennett, if this is okay to do to somebody that you don't like their position on the LGBTQ religion, as April calls it, then it's gotta be okay to have it be done to you. Or we say that it's not okay. And we knew to the symbolism, yeah. but it can't be unequally applied, which ironically is the principal clause that all of the gay rights organizers used throughout the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s in order to legalize gay marriage, legalize hospital visitation rights, legalize all of these different insurance um, securities and things like that was the equal protection clause that all citizens are, are given the right to be equally protected under the law. So it looks like you had to lawyer up here. Let's keep going with the story. I mean, we're not even done telling the rest of your story. I can't believe mm -hmm. there's more to this story, okay? But the cops were sent to so your house. So this stand oh, whoops, that whoops, I'm whoops. taking is I not... I keep messing that one up, man. So the cops were sent to your house, and this one I thought was just oh, absolutely yes. nuts. Um, you got to tell us, uh, tell us basically what they said. Here's the cops at April's house telling her to, to, to calm, calm the proclamation of the family down. Um, Actually, I'm going to mute that so you can talk over it. Tell, walk us through what's happening right here, April. This was before, um, this was Tuesday, May 30th. So this was before we had put up the family proclamation, but this was in response to the pride flags that um, Jennifer Awarda had sent to our, the PTA president had sent to our front yard. And they basically said, you're just as guilty because you um, interacted with her. And I said, she came on my page. Every interaction we had was because she would not leave me alone. I, I never have even met this woman. I don't I don't have anything to do with her, you know, and they were like, well, because you defended yourself, because you interacted willingly, you're equally at fault. That was basically what they said. And my husband asked, um, OK, so what about the pride flags that were delivered? Is that trespassing? They said, no, that's not harassment. That's not trespassing. That's not illegal. And my husband said, what? OK, well, can I go on anyone's lawn then and put a put a flag on their lawn? And he and the cops said, I'm not going to do what ifs with you. <laughs> well, what's interesting so. is, is is we got to really have a conversation with law enforcement in this country as well, because law enforcement committed a huge grievous error during COVID. And Michael Malice and all of the libertarians and all of the ANCAP guys loved COVID because they finally, the public learned the lesson that the cops are the bad guys, as they said, that the cops are <laughs> Caesar, that the cops are the state. Now, I don't necessarily espouse that idea. You know, I support law enforcement as long as they are defending what I view as the, 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 the God-inspired constitution. And as long as they actually live up to their oath to uh, and their, their sworn oath to defend the constitution, I'm okay with law enforcement because we do believe in being subject to kings and principalities and upholding and sustaining right. the law. And you need cops in order to do that, right? But the cops got to figure out, like, how they are going to behave uh, uh, because this, this, there's no way that this is equal administration law. I'm going to play this so you guys can hear what happened on April's lawn here. This is a uh, law enforcement from uh, Murray PD right here. Right. Parties are going to get told the same thing is stop. Um, if it continues after this, then we're going to be able to do that. So he comes in and he says, okay, both parties, you need to stop it. Now, my first problem with that is, hey, hold on a second. If I come up and I'm 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 angry at my wife and Whoa. I'm about to <laughs> I'm about to beat her. Whoa. OK, <laughs> no, no. We're using we're using an example that, that cops find all the time. Then I put you in a chokehold. And <laughs> then, That's true. Yeah. And after yeah. your nails are done, I don't want to get gouged in the eyes. But, <laughs> but if a large physical physically dominant male is coming up to a vulnerable female 
and she has not done something to physically provoke him, and he comes up to physically uh, attack her. A cop can't come up and say, oh, both of you, stop it. Because one of them is the aggressor that is breaking the law, me, right. and one is innocent that hasn't broken the law. Mouthing off to your husband is not breaking the law. Coming and beating your wife, that's breaking the law. So these are two disparate offenses. One is a violation of law, one is not. So if the cop comes in and just says, look, we need to take care of my convenience right now. And my convenience is I don't want to have to actually be a cop and figure out who's right. in the wrong. So you guys both stop it. That I have a problem with this. This is suburbanism. This is law enforcement that has actually haven't had to do its job for 30 years because it's been on suburban autopilot because the neighborhood is so nice. They haven't actually had to figure a thing or two out. I see Cody nodding. That's kind of funny. I'm glad to see Cody was agreeing with me. But um, let's let's finish to see what else he says. Criminal charges on who? Whoever and whoever continues the behavior. What about the Rainbow Project Rainbow? That's not electronic communication harassment and it's not trespassing. So he literally says, as an agent of the law, that somebody else coming and planting the symbol of an ideology that you do not espouse in basically an aggressive uh, protest in your face way on your right. very own private property in your lawn is not trespassing. Well, if it's not, what is? Did he give a better explanation? What if, what if, what if he had brought, no, he, what if he had placed Nazi flags on your on your front lawn? Like, I have a funny feeling they'd have a different standard. Yeah, so, right. so the Ku Klux Klan can do some of those uh, symbol burnings <laughs> on, on the front lawn of a black person and it's not trespassing? Like this, this, this makes absolutely no sense. Did did he elaborate? No, he refused to. He, we asked him. He refused to elaborate. You know, this is uh, another point that's uh, incredibly ironic. We found an article from 2021 on Fox 13 Now News or something like that um, about a pride flag that had been stolen in a Marie neighborhood in Jen Awarda's neighborhood. And she's in the article, and um, the Murray police are quoted in that article as investigating that as a hate crime. So incredibly ironic that when it comes to a pride flag being stolen from someone else, they're like, oh, well, that's possibly a hate crime. But when someone puts a pride flag in my yard without my permission, knowing that it's contrary to my beliefs and that it's an offense to me, that's not her not even harassment. So... Okay, maybe, we're, we're, maybe there's an agenda here going on. <laughs> plot twist. This is Jennifer's husband. Oh, <laughs> now it's the beginning of oh, a romance. No. I watch soap operas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to get to a couple of super chats here really fast, and we're going to finish listening to what the cop has to say. Palace One says, thanks for all your great work, Midnight Mormons. Well, thank you very much for the super chat, Palace One. And Ziploc95 says, also, the same people saying... I'm a girl, BC, I feel like I'm on the inside, say feeling the Holy Ghost isn't a source of truth, LOL. Yeah, it, it, it's true. You can't use right, atheistic right. arguments against how you feel internally uh, to, to hurt religion argumentatively, okay? And then go around and say, well, that's what we're going to use to promote our position argumentatively later. Now, ironically, um, we actually did a podcast on the false... Uh, what's it called the uh the false gospel of feelings so um we're not all a feelings-based religion i mean it, there's there's five right. measures of of faith they're called the handsome five model jacob hansen <laughs> brought them up there you know I, we, we can relitigate those later but ziploc 95 you bring up a really good point we only have four more minutes left with april despain here guys so if you have any last super chat uh super chats you want to give us uh we'll read them on air any other questions you want to ask april send them our way but um, Ziploc95 also says, Q, that means question, April. Um, <laughs> where do we as America see this whole thing going? What's the end game for the woke community? We will they never be satisfied until there are no Christian and normal family slash gender roles left? You know, you're an ins insider on this fight. Uh, how would you answer this question? Where do you see this all going? Uh, and what's the end game for the woke community? I know what Tim Pool thinks. What do you think? Me? Yeah, I can tell you I can tell you what I think. Um, if you look into queer theory, the goal is to normalize to normalize queer, meaning there is no normal anymore. So, yes, exactly. The goal is no more gender roles, no more tradition. Um, 
everything's just on its head. Queer theory is the antithesis of the gospel. It's the antithesis of the family proclamation. And it has no place in the church. We need to stand up for religious freedom and for for those traditions. And I, I thought it was interesting that you brought up that um, in the past they used equality. I can't remember what you said, You, but the word equality equal was protection, part of it. Equal protection under the law. It's e a clause right. in the Constitution. So equal, equal. There's a reason they don't use the word equal anymore. They use the word equity because equity means we get special treatment. We get priority. You need to take a back seat. You need to sit down. And that's what they want. That's what is being pushed. And it, they they can push that, but the U.S. Constitution does not protect equity. The U.S. Constitution protects equality. And so we live in the USA. We need to stand for the U.S. Constitution. And that's that's my position on that. April's, okay. been, April's been doing her reading. She, she, she <laughs> yeah. understands. When, when you know what queer theory is all about, right. you begin to understand that this is literally a movement against truth. It's to mm -hmm. it's to make these categories blurred into ob uh, oblivion, as as they put it. So, she's well, what about oblivion. the people that don't view it so philosophically and just think, look, they're Pride Month useful, is for those the, people. The Let them celebrate. Back off. That was kind of a jerk. They move. don't just, know what they're pushing. It's not okay. Just because they don't understand doesn't make it okay. The people who are behind it, they absolutely understand what they are pushing, and there's so many useful idiots. Most of the people are useful idiots. But we need to educate, be edu listen to James Lindsay, get educated, be informed, and stand up for truth. It matters. It's, it, the fact that there are useful idiots who don't really understand what they're pushing is irrelevant because those who know what they're pushing are going to uh, achieve their goals if they, if they have their way. Wow, and that you, go, you go, go. This is why feminism got so far for the past 100 years. <laughs> because 100 years ago, there was an unfaithful version of April Despain in the fifth row screaming at the apostles. And they were so <laughs> fearful of it. Like, I played devil's advocate there for 10 seconds. And I couldn't get to the end of my sentence before she just knocked that homer out of the park like it was a home run derby. <laughs> All right, this is awesome. So, April, I got a couple more super chats here for you. Um, I think S.S. Laurent is pushing back on you a little bit, says we should be slow to respond. Hoping to allow the Holy Ghost to guide our response, correct? I think this is our best tool, often underused, even by members. Uh, in this process, have you ever thought, like, ah, there's a time I jumped the gun a little bit too much? Or do you feel wholly justified in how you behaved because we're in emergency mode now? Um, I, I just say, you know, wasn't there a talk this past conference where they said, um, Peter, yeah, he, he sunk, but at least he got out of the boat. And I think that's kind of where I'm at, like, yeah, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. Maybe sometimes I'm a little over the top or too quick or whatever, but I am doing the best I can. And I know that God stands with truth. And like I've said uh, several times, God's my ultimate judge, not my neighbors, not, not my church members. It's God. And I am trying to, like Pr President Nelson has said, follow the Holy Ghost. I'm trying to follow the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost to me, has said, stand up for truth, stand up for your children, and I'm doing it. Okay, last two super chats here. We only got 90 seconds left, guys. Eric Alo says, April, thank you for standing up for the family proclamation. So you get a personalized thank you from April mm -hmm. Lowe. And Luke Hansen says, the fact that the PTA president sent those activists into April's lawn shows that she either doesn't find April dangerous or she's okay to endanger her own. That's true. I mean, what what leader puts their own volunteers in danger if April were to be such a hateful, violent, bigoted, uh, horrible person that, you know, this is MAGA country. And, you know, that always results in January 6th violence <laughs> mm -hmm. in the middle of the, mm -hmm. the, the, the lovely pruned lawn in Murray, Utah. You know what I'm saying? Why would you <laughs> ever throw uh, your your own um, your own uh, volunteers into uh, in, into harm's way like that. So, all right. Well, you've been so gracious with your time. Uh, April, tell us any final thoughts and how can people follow you, get in touch with you if they want to get in touch with you and if they're inspired by you and want to learn more. What, how, how do you prefer people, uh, people follow you? Your Twitter account, just final thoughts and then how do people find you? Uh, my final thoughts are stand for truth don't don't make your neighbors do it by themselves it's we all have the responsibility to stand for what we know is true and to stand for our children and our families and if if we don't 
then our children are going to lose the freedom to stand for truth. And, you know, Jordan Peterson says, when you speak truth, whatever oh. happens is the best possible outcome. So oh. just do it. And if you get hated, that's the best possible outcome. You know, just take it all with stride and trust that God has your back. And that's where I, I stand. And the way to follow me, I'm on Twitter at April D. Spain. I'm on Instagram at April underscore D. Spain. And then I'm on Facebook as April Wild D. Spain. So any of those ways. All right. Awesome. Well, April, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We're going to make good on our promise not to keep you for more than an hour. Uh, mm -hmm. You've been great. We'll link to you in this. Uh, everybody Thanks. else, we're going to stay and we're going to analyze everything April said. But for <laughs> now, we're going to wish her best of luck. Thank you very much, April. We will see you again thanks. soon. All okay, right. Thanks. So, guys, what did you think of that? That was crazy cool, man. Yeah. No, I... I I really think the the part, and I wanted to ask her about, maybe she can message people about this, was how can people get those family proclamation flags? Because here's Ooh. my thought. I, I'm, I'm really, I think I'm going to look something up for you while you're talking. All right. Well, okay. Well, here's what, what my thoughts are, is that I think that she makes a great point. If a school is going to disp display pride flags, which are a particular moral belief about the nature of identity, sexuality, and things of that nature, well then, we should go to the school and say, hey, here's, here's our view of this, will you promote this? Because if they're gonna promote one ideology, they would have to be able to promote others. And so I'm all for it, like, I wanna issue the challenge to anyone listening, like, look, if your school's uh, displaying pride flags, which my kid's school is not, um, if they were, I'd, I'd do this, I'd go and I'd say, look, I, I would like to display this and, you know, document the fact that they don't that, or that they won't um, they won't display your flag. And yeah. so I think that's a good point. she makes. <coughs> so check but this can't out. The pushback be that pride is not a religion and there's separation of church and state. <laughs> but w this is where I think April has made her bones in the argument is that. Her well, bones. what is Yeah. What is it? What is a religion? Well, Christianity has original sin, it has priests, it has priestesses, it has unviolable cardinal rules, and there is, in this new woke ideology, like the original sin is being a white male, okay, the priests and the priestesses are uh, basically the, the, the legislators and the, um, the influencers and uh, the therapists, therapists are like the, the high priests of the woke religion, right, and there's definitely tenets of the faith that thou shalt not violate, one of them is speak evil of anybody associated with pride that you may not disagree with like they could cut you off in the freeway and don't you dare say anything wrong or else you're a bigot well let's and then cancel they'll cancel you like they have the worst excommunication without a redemption narrative i've ever seen of any faith out there keep going well let's let's read what the actual constitution actually says in the first amendment and before we do though i'm going to show you the flag you were looking for okay. i don't know really the first thing about nauvoo supply uh, other than uh, I, I <laughs> saw them on Twitter. It was recommended to me by, by Twitter. And I thought they had some funny T-shirts, so I messaged <laughs> the guy. But now that I messaged the guy once, it shows up all the time. And today, I think he said, like, I'm working on it or something like that. So that star <laughs> is actually, did you know that there was for, like, eight months a Deseret uh, a state of Deseret in America yes, that went all the awesome. way down to Los Angeles? <laughs> so that's, like, the Deseret star and... Uh, um, I don't know all the symbology here, but then it also has the family, the proclamation of the world with the entire proclamation of the family. on. That was pretty hardcore. So anyway, keep going. Well, I was going to say, if you're going to if you're going to make the argument that, um, you know, oh, there's a separation of church and state, the, the Constitution actually does not say that. The Constitution says that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Okay, or abridging freedom of speech or the press or the right of the people to peaceably assemble. But the <laughs> the First Amendment does not say that you can't manifest your religious beliefs in the public sphere by any stretch of the imagination. It says that the government cannot prohibit you from freely exercising your religion. Now, Congress shall make no, and it actually, the other thing is, historically, it's speaking specifically to Congress States actually do have the right to even, uh, according to at least originally, they did have the ability to actually um, have state-sponsored religions 
when the con after the, the signing of the Constitution, because it was only on the federal government. But regardless, if you actually read the text of the Constitution and the way they were actually writing about it, it was not to stop the freedom of expression of religion in the public sphere by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, it says the opposite. It says that Congress shall not prohibit you from freely exercising your religion. Okay, that was hardcore. Let's get to a couple of super chats here, guys. We uh, got another, I'm um, looking at this, four minutes and 20 seconds before we got to go. So um, if you have any last burning questions, make sure you get out of your system. Also, please like this stream. It tells the algorithms that you enjoy our content and they'll recommend it when it comes up uh, more often. Uh, S. Saint Laurent says, in New York City, we just end the school year before all of this. Sorry, no, in NC. I meant North Carolina, not New York City. We just end <laughs> all of this. You know what I'm saying? And um, did I miss another one? Did I miss another one, Brittany? You are the keeper of the super chats. <laughs> oh. uh, nope, Luke Hansen was the last one. Okay, cool. So we're all good here. Yeah. So yeah. Um, anyway, Cody, where do we go wrong in all of this? My man, you're the diversity reader. You're, you're like, take us home, my man. Like, well, w now that you saw this whole thing go down, what do you think? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. It's kind of a little bit of like I was alluding to earlier. I mean, I, I don't, I have a feeling that from the perspective of every single person involved, no one did anything wrong. And for the most part, Right? Like, yeah, probably. I would definitely think, like, yeah, I do think it's, I think going to people's homes is always crossing the line in any circumstance, in any kind of disagreement. But I don't know. To, to me, the, 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 this is a unfortunate, small, not small, but it's a, it's a specific incident of something that's much larger going on across the entire country. It's bigger than just, you know, like the like Pride Month and LGBT stuff and it's in conflict with religion. It's just this very much rising level of, I don't know if intolerance is the word, but they're, they're I personally you study a lot of history. What do you think this forebodes? Keep going. I personally well, I mean it, it, it. You need to be able in order to live in like the kind of like free country. You have to be able to live near people you do not agree with who do not agree with you. And that's OK. Um, once you stop accepting that, once you stop accepting that you can have neighbors who disagree with you, but they're bigots. But sure my, my point exactly though right like that that i just mean from like a larger like perspective it is really distressing to see that on such like a large scale on like a because i mean again like you you can you can look anywhere stuff that'll elevate to like death threats in this instance violence actually in some other instances and you look back and i mean look at this look at this incident for example right like someone didn't want to i guess she said she had a you know kind of like history going back and forth with the school board but still it's like nothing anything she did in that uh series of events was like inflammatory or like crossing the line or making a big deal but suddenly it escalates to death threats over like what literally days over you know like over something that even if it bothers you you would imagine if, if someone put a flag up that just said like me specifically me is a bad person and they hate me i would be like i don't like it but you know what i mean like is what it is but it's just you can see that there's so much other stuff going around in america it seems like right now there's so much tension there's so much there's so many people just waiting to start the fight on so many top fronts, so many topics, where when you get to the really ones that matter, like you see like with schools, I think just kids in general, people are protective of, right? Yeah. But you're seeing in these parts where like the, it does come to a head when, when the rubber does meet the road, right? You can't just pretend that these people don't exist anymore. You have to confront the fact that they don't agree with you. We're seeing how it's, it's escalating time and time again. And I so, so you are the judge. You're Judge Cody. Just I'm like not, judge I'm not, I, I am no judge. No, I'm no judge. Well, do you think? Do you think April was was was, was correct and she was forthright and she was justified in her I actions? Get, I think I did nothing wrong. Okay. That's what, that's what, that's what so you can say April, April Despain did, did nothing wrong. <laughs> did we yeah. just stumble upon that one? You know, yeah. like yeah, well, I mean, great. but I mean, like it, it, it's I don't know, and maybe I'm just naive and stupid, but like to me, I feel like. You know, it's no, the kind you're of thing. Not, Cody. Adults should be able to have these disagreements. Yeah. You know, All like, right. like someone says, you should put up this flag. And they say, you know what? I'm going to put up this flag instead. That is like a totally rational, normal thing for adults and like a functioning society to do. Okay, and then the last question before we go is style. But honestly, Carden, if someone yeah. came and put flags on our front yard, get the hell off my lawn. Exactly. Like <laughs> I will seek my great Dane on you. Like, like, like get away. By the way, there's no way. That trespassing in order to vandalize because during Prop 8, it was it was literally called vandalism. The, it, there's an anti-vandalism law in Southern California and like 20 municipalities that you cannot put a sign for somebody else's political campaign on somebody else's lawn, uh, you know, knowingly or on purpose or else it's actually considered vandalism because they know that it can lead to political violence. By the way, we need to start calling out. These anti-Mormons, because they're specific anti-Mormons that ride the back of the LGBTQ lobby, they don't 
protect minorities. They traffic in the misery of minorities. They create minorities and they traffic in their misery. We need to start calling them the stochastic terrorists that they are. Because these people that are going, do you guys know what stochastic terrorism is? No, that's another big word. Yeah, yeah. Is that right up there with, what was the other big word today? Diasporic? Diasporic, yeah. Yeah, diaspora. Diaspora. You know what I'm saying? So do you know what stochastic terrorism is, Cody? Yeah, it's one of those those kind of tricky things, right? Because like... (laughs) So it's it's very close to saying doing things I don't like is terrorism is when you really define it enough. But um, well, it's kind of like what's been done of us for thirty years, but now there's a name for it. So uh, <laughs> here it is. Uh, as but no, uh, it's, it's kind of like it's kind of like it's almost like terrorism through inciting, right? You, you kind of just are constantly like pushing it towards. Like you you don't go out there and say I'm going to go blow this building up, but you're like, wow, look at all these people on this building. Okay. Look at, as described by leading scholars, stochastic terrorism involves the use of mass media to provoke random acts okay. of ideologically motivated violence that are statistically predictable but individually unpredictable. Yeah. All right. But again, it's very close to saying that, you know, like, hey, you know, if you promote X thing I don't like, you're actually saying that those people should go kill everyone. So that's like, it, it, it very quickly becomes. Having opinions I disagree with is actually terrorism. That's why I don't like this concept because it, it requires a lot of like a lot of implications, a lot of I know what you really mean. Sometimes people could be making what are very obviously veiled threats, right? But I think when you kind of kind of go on like the larger scale and you extract it a little bit more, I don't well, know. Well, also man, it's like, like who will rid me of this meddlesome meddlesome priest? Like exactly. I agree, yeah. I agree with what Elon Musk said, where he says there should be an apology issued and there should be a fine. I think there should be a fee paid to the Holocaust Museum in Berlin for every time somebody in the media uses the term Nazi without it being justified. Because all it does is dilute the actual Nazism that existed and the actual Holocaust that existed against the Jews. I'm sorry. The proclamation of the family flag is not ethnocentric supremacy. Okay, and the fact that you would equate those two is just diluting in the minds of all the young people that are watching this a deeper understanding of what the big H word actually was. And you should have to pay a fee like want to talk reparations every single time you freaking use that word inappropriately. I think you should have to pay a fee to the big H museum. So anyway, Diamond Dave, thank you very much for the uh, for the super chat. This last one we'll read. Diamond Dave says, agree with Cody. The only thing that gets me heated having been abused as a kid, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, my friend, is the threats on her family. Outside of it, this is overblown on both sides, IMO. Yes, it definitely could be overblown in in, in, in our humble opinion. Hopefully, uh, calm, calmer minds rule the day at the end of the day. But uh, I, I think this is the microcosm that does represent the macrocosm. The macrocosm is cripplingly, cripplingly double standardized. No, the double macrocosm standard. is that you probably should never talk to anyone. Like, I uh, learned this at a young age. Like, I have less than five friends. Like, I'm fine. Like, <laughs> y'all are a little bit crazy. I'm fine. Like, when she said I got out of the boat and, like, at least I got out. Like, no, like, I'm napping. Like, don't wake yeah. me up. I'm in the boat. Like, you go sink. I'm fine. Like, All right, everybody, before we go, please make sure that you like this live stream. Please make sure if you haven't subscribed yet that you do subscribe because we love having you here. We love hanging out with all you guys and uh, we love it when you participate. Nothing is better than a really good live stream here at Midnight Strike Through Mormons. So um, anyway, this has been real and it's been awesome. Make sure you follow Jacob Hansen on at Thoughtful Saint. He is also on Facebook as Thoughtful Faith and has a really cool podcast on YouTube called Thoughtful Faith. You know what I'm saying? Also, uh, Boho Birdie on Instagram. No, She's don't follow out me. There. I okay. don't want friends. Yeah, no, she, I'm kidding. She, she doesn't want friends. That's <laughs> funny. I'm kidding. And then, um, and then, yeah, follow us on Midnight Mormons. Please like, share, and subscribe. This has been Midnight Strike Through Mormons.